Okay, so we're going to um, prove the triangle inequality that the um, absolute value of z1 plus z2 is always less than or equal to the absolute value of z1 plus the absolute value of z2. So this is a standard um, fact in calculus and in um, real analysis. The proof for complex analysis is pretty similar, but there are a few subtleties um, that we need to pay attention to. So first of all, I want to note a few facts um, that we'll use. The first one um, is that the real part of any um, complex number is always less than or equal to um, the absolute value of that number. So we'll use that fact in the proof. The second thing that we'll do is that if I take the conjugate twice, um, I get back to my original um, complex number. And these are pretty simple. Um, the first one um, proved in class, and the second one is um, one of your homework assignments. So with that stuff in mind, let's go ahead and look at how the proof is going to work. So we'll start out by looking at um, the absolute value of z1 plus z2 um, squared. So in class, um, we saw that this is just z1 plus z2 times z1 plus z2 that conjugate. Um, but it's a property of conjugates that this is just equal to z1 plus z2 times the conjugate of z1 plus the conjugate um, of z2. So if we go ahead and multiply this out, we're going to get um, z1, z1 conjugate plus z1, z2 conjugate plus z1 conjugate z2 plus z2 z2 conjugate. So this is um, the absolute value of z1 squared plus z1 z2 conjugate plus now notice what I'm going to do here. This is z1 z2 but I'm going to do conjugate over that twice. And we'll come back to that in the next line. And then plus the absolute value of z2 squared. So this is the absolute value of z1 squared plus z1 z2 conjugate plus. Now by taking the conjugate twice in this one, um, notice what happens. I'm going to get z1 z2 conjugate from applying um, this first one, these first two rather, and it's going to be the conjugate of that. Um, so then plus the absolute value of z2 squared. Now, this term right here um, is one of our expressions for the real part of z1 um, times z2 conjugate. So this is going to be equal to z1 squared plus 2 times the real part of z1 z2 conjugate plus the absolute value of z2 squared. Now I'm going to use um, the first of those facts I talked about and note that this is less than or equal to the absolute value of z1 squared plus 2 times the absolute value of z1 z2 conjugate plus the absolute value of z2 squared. So this is equal to 
z1 squared. Oops, let me try that again. z1 squared plus 2 times the absolute value of z1 times the absolute value of z2 conjugate plus the absolute value of z2 squared. But it's one of the properties of conjugates that the absolute value of the conjugate is the absolute value of the complex number. So this is z1 squared plus 2 times absolute z1 times absolute z2 plus z2 or absolute squared. But now this um, will factor into z1 absolute z1 plus absolute z2 quantity squared. Now, if we put all this together um, with what we started with, we have gotten that the absolute value of z1 plus z2 squared is less than or equal to the absolute value of z1 plus absolute z2 quantity squared. So if we take roots on both sides, then we're going to get the triangle inequality that z1 plus z2 absolute value is less than or equal to z1 absolute plus z2 absolute value. So, that's the end of the proof.